Hello students. In this video, we are going to discuss the topic of new drug development. This video is third in the series of videos on new drug discovery and development. Now, as we all know, introducing a new drug in the market is a highly complex process and it cost pharmaceutical company around 1.5 billion US dollars and 10 to 15 years of research and development. Now, look at this figure. It gives a compiled schematic representation of various stages in new drug discovery and development process. Now, the entire process of new drug discovery and development has two main stages. Now, the first stage is the new drug discovery and the second is the new drug development. Now, the main purpose of new drug discovery is to identify leads. Now, what are these leads? Leads are potential drug candidates with high affinity and selectivity for the targets and with optimal pharmacokinetic, pharmaceutical and toxicological properties. Now, for details on each step of drug discovery, you can refer to my video on new drug discovery. Now, during drug development, uh, the compounds uh, that is the leads which were generated and optimized during the drug discovery process are further screened in animal and human beings so as to finally identify a single most safe and effective drug molecule that is the new drug. Now, after receiving approval from the licensing authority, that is the Food and Drug Administration FDA, drug is manufactured in the large scale and it is made available in the market for the treatment of a specific disease or disorder. Uh, so, the drug di discovery process ends uh, when the lead compounds are generated and optimized and this is followed by the process of drug development. Now, uh, stages of new drug development include preclinical studies. Now, preclinical studies are the studies where optimized lead compounds are screened in animals. Now, data obtained from these uh, preclinical studies is compiled in an investigational new drug application. Now, this IND application is submitted to FDA for review. Now, if approval is granted, then clinical trials are carried out in human beings and the data obtained from the clinical trials is compiled in new drug application that is NDA. Now this new drug application is again submitted to FDA for review. Now again if approval is granted for the new drug then the new drug is manufactured on the large scale and it is made available in the market. Now this is followed by the post market surveillance or phase 4 trial. Now let's discuss each of these steps one by one. The, dr uh, the drug discovery process ends when lead compounds are found as potential drug candidates and the process of drug development begins. Now, the first step in the new drug discovery is the preclinical studies. Now, as discussed in the previous video on new drug discovery, leads are generated and they are further optimized and around 250 compounds are designed. Now, these 250 compounds are tested or they are further screened by the preclinical studies. Now, preclinical studies refer to the testing of drug in animals before trial could be carried out in the human beings. Now, wide range of doses are tested in vitro, in vivo and in silico. Now, in vitro, in vivo and in silico are the experimental models used to perform preclinical studies. Now, in silico study is performed on computers via simulation on a computer. In vitro uh, means in a glass. Studies are performed outside the body of living organism in test tubes and petri dishes. Now, these studies are performed on microbial cultures, cells, tissues or other biological component of animal body. Now, in vivo means that the study takes place inside a living organism. That means the study takes place inside an intact animal. Uh, now, let's talk about the uh, preclinical studies that are performed in vivo. Now, mainly two types of studies are performed in animals in vivo, pharmacological studies and toxicological studies. Now, pharmacological studies include uh, pharmacodynamic studies and pharmacokinetic studies. Now, in pharmacodynamic studies, dose-response relationship is studied. 
The drug is administered systemically and dose response curves are plotted. Now, therapeutic index of the drug is determined. Now, therapeutic index predicts safety of drug. Now, dose response curve that is DRC also give information on maximum efficacy and safety of the drug. Now, mechanism of action of drug is also elucidated by performing the pharmacodynamic studies. Now, the pharmacokinetic studies performed in vivo give information on the absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion that is ADME of potential drug candidates. Volume of distribution that is VD and half-life of the, of the drug that is T half is also determined. Now, second type of uh, preclinical studies which are performed in vivo are the toxicological studies. Now, toxicological studies are of three types, acute studies, then subacute studies and the chronic studies. Now, acute toxicological studies are the short-term animal studies of one to three days. These are single dose studies. Now, LD50 and ED50 are determined in the animals. Now, LD50 is the lethal dose 50 and ED50 is the effective dose 50. So, both these two type of doses that is LD50 and ED50 are determined in the animals. Now, subacute studies are the studies of 2 to 12 weeks where repeated doses are given to the animal. Now, chronic toxicity studies are the long term studies where the drug is given for 6 to 12 months and these are also repeated dose studies. Now, aim of uh, acute, subacute and chronic toxicity studies is to determine safe dose and the dose range of potential drug candidates. Now, other studies uh, that are performed during preclinical studies are the reproductive and teratogenic studies, then mutagenic and carcinogenic studies. Apart from this, product formulation prototype is also identified. That is whether the drug is to be delivered by oral route or by the topical route or by the parenteral route. Now, aim of formulation optimization is to ensure that the drug is delivered to the proper place at the right time and in the correct concentration. Thus, formulation optimization goes on throughout the preclinical and the clinical stages. After a successful completion of preclinical studies, preclinical studies data is incorporated in investigational new drug application and this IND application is submitted to FDA for review. Now, IND application include data of uh, preclinical studies and manufacturing information of the drug. Now, IND application is submitted to FDA for review and approval. Now, FDA approval is essential for initiating the studies in human beings, that is for initiating the clinical trials. So, by the end of preclinical studies, out of 250 potential drug candidates, only 5 drug candidates are left for further evaluation and screening during the clinical trials while the rest of the compounds are rejected. After preclinical studies, next step in the new drug development is the clinical trials. Now, five potential drug candidates that were selected by screening through the preclinical studies are further evaluated in the clinical trials. So, after obtaining investigational new drug license, clinical trials are initiated. Now, potential drug uh, candidate is formulated into a suitable dosage form so that it could be tested in human beings. Now, clinical trials are conventionally divided into four phases, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase 4. Now, let's first, first understand phase 1 clinical trials. Now, during phase 1 studies, to minimize any risk, a very small group of 20 to 80 healthy volunteers are exposed to potential drug candidates. Now, trial is started with the lowest estimated dose and the dose is increased stepwise to achieve the effective dose. Now, potentially dangerous effect of uh, the drug candidate are detected on the vital functions, 
such as heart rate, respiration, effect on kidneys, liver, etc. And pharmacokinetic parameters, namely absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, that is ADME profile of drug candidates is also studied. Now, primary or the main aim of phase 1 study is to establish safety and tolerability of the drug. Now, candidates that do not exhibit desired level of safety and toler tolerability are dropped at this stage. Now, the drug candidates that are found to be safe and tolerable are further screened by the phase 2 clinical trials. Now, phase 2 clinical trials involve 100 to 500 patients and these studies are carried out in 2 to 4 centers. Now, primary aim of phase 2 studies is to evaluate and establish therapeutic efficacy, then uh, the dose range and ceiling effect of the potential drug candidates. Now, drug candidates, uh, all those drug candidates are dropped that do not exhibit desired level of clinical efficacy and safety. Now, drug candidates exhibiting desired level of safety, toler tolerability and therapeutic efficacy are further studied in phase 3 clinical trials. Now, phase 3 clinical trials involve 1000 to 3000 patients. Safety and toler tolerability of uh, new drug candidates are determined on the wider scale. Now, aim of phase 3 clinical trials is to establish value of drug candidates in comparison with the existing standard drugs. Now, by the end of phase 3 clinical trials, all the drug candidates are screened out. That is, uh, all the drug candidates are dropped out and only one potential drug candidate emerges out as the new drug. Uh, so, if the new drug is found to be safe and efficacious in the clinical trials, a new drug application is submitted to FDA, that is the licensing authority. Now, FDA reviews data and either approve or drop the drug. Now, if FDA is convinced drug is given, given the marketing approval, the drug is manufactured in the large scale and it is marketed for the use. Uh, now, the last step. In the new drug development is the post marketing surveillance or phase 4 studies. Now these are the studies uh, or these are the uh, trials that, that are conducted on the new drug in the market. Now post marketing surveillance refers to the monitoring of drug safety after the new drug reaches the market. And the primary purpose of these studies is to identify previously unrecognized adverse effect. So, the new drug is tested in a very large patient population and for a very long period of time. There is monitoring of drug safety after the new drug reaches the market. Now, safety of new drug is monitored using FDA adverse event reporting system database. And the data obtained from this phase include unpredicted idiosyncratic adverse drug reactions. Uh, there is also reporting of unsuspected drug interactions. Now, potential additional indications may also emerge uh, during these studies. And apart from this, modification of dosage may also be required. Uh, so, the process of drug development continues even after marketing of the drug and many a times the drug is withdrawn from the market because of the serious adverse drug reactions. So, this is a complete information on the development of new drug. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.